This guy should have died seven times, but miraculously, he saved himself all seven times with the grace of a ninja on a caffeine high. Believing that he'd hauled his personal angel of luck somewhere along the way, he's been buying lottery tickets religiously for years. And guess what? He bagged over $8 million. So why do some folks hit the jackpot while others just spend their cash on tickets? The odds of snagging that Powerball jackpot are about 1 in 300 million. One way to visualize it is by comparing it to the size of a hot dog. Wait, hear me out. A dog's average length is 6 inches, so it takes like 264 million of them to encircle the 25,000 mile equator. Lay another 36 million of them end to end, and they'd extend nearly 3,500 miles into space. Now picture yourself plucking just one lucky hot dog from these 300 million sausages lined in a 30,000 mile long chain. Yep, that's your shot at jackpot glory. But wait, you say. More tickets equals more chances, right? Hmm, nah, not really. Even if you pick 10 dogs from that 30,000 mile line, your odds would still be slimmer than a supermodel on a juice cleanse. But hey, good news, you're almost 300 times more likely to get struck by lightning than to score that mega millions. I mean, that's also kind of a once in a lifetime chance, you know. However, there are lotteries that are easier to win than others, but a bigger chance of winning means a lower payout. You know roulette, right? Bet on red or black, and you'll walk away with chump change compared to the big bucks for picking a single number. More chances means less moolah in your pocket, plain and simple. So you still itching for that jackpot? All right, I'm feeling extra nice today, so I'm about to drop some lottery wisdom on you. Ever thought about playing every single number combination in the drawing? I know how it sounds, but listen, forget about Mega Millions and Powerball. Those guys sell a mind-boggling 300 million tickets, which would bankrupt even the Sultan of Brunei. But for smaller state-level lotteries with a more manageable ticket count and jackpot, it's game on. A syndicate tried this in Virginia back in 92. Well, they didn't actually get 100% of the tickets, but they grabbed enough to clinch that sweet, sweet jackpot. Lucky. Now, here's a more accessible hack. Ditch the predictable numbers. Your birthday, your favorite digits? Nah, everyone and their grandma is using those. So stick to numbers beyond 31. And for Pete's sake, don't just pick a straight column of numbers on the ticket. Sure, the odds will remain the same, but at least you won't be sharing your catch with half the town if you win. But maybe you're thinking, nah, that's too risky. I need a win. Fear not. Here are some alternatives for you. Ever heard of the scratcher game? Sometimes it happens that the big prizes in the scratcher don't get bought at the beginning of the game. So the unsold scratchers harbor a treasure trove of unclaimed prizes. That's when the magic occurs. Some states spill the beans on how many prizes remain unclaimed. So you can use this info and strike when the iron's hot. Or how about this? Find a game where you have to guess a four-digit number. You're gonna bet on a four-digit number and repeat digits like 1122 or 1212. If you bet all the six permutations of these digits, your odds of winning are around 1 in 1600 now. Way better, right? Yeah, still low. It seems that even the luckiest folks in the world could not have any chance. Hold the phone, I almost forgot about this guy, Frayn Selak, the living proof that Final Destination is no fiction. He was born on a boat in the middle of the sea with a not gonna make it prognosis, but he survived. Fast forward to 1957, his bus decides to take a dip in the river. He survived. In 1962, his train derailed straight into the river again. Brain still here. Then in 1963, plane crash, but he's still kicking. In 1966, his bus plunged into a river, of course, but lucky Frayn's still with us. In 1970, his car caught fire while he was driving. This man, not a scratch. In 1973, car on fire, again, and maybe that was the end. Nope, he survived. In 1995, a bus hit him. He walked away with bruises. In 2018, his car fell off a freaking cliff. But guess who climbs out of the wreckage? Frame dodged death at birth. Then it haunted him for life. At least that's what he said. There's no way to verify any of this. Still, he managed to snag 8 million bucks in the lottery along the way. And that is a fact. So, what's the deal? Why do some people have so much luck in their life while others can't catch a break? It's as simple as this. We've all got the same amount of luck. It's just that some of us choose to overlook its starring role in our lives and successes. Take hockey players, for example. Ever wondered what separates NHL pros from the bench warmers? Sure, hard work, top-notch coaching, and parents who willingly sacrifice their precious sleep. 
but they probably won't mention how lucky they were to be born in January. Yeah, something as seemingly as trivial as the month you were born in can make all the difference. The cutoff date for Kids Hockey League is January 1st, so those born early in the year have a leg up. Literally. They're a tad older, a tad bigger, a tad faster than their late birthday counterparts. And as luck would have it, these promising kids get more ice time, more tournaments, better coaching, more opportunities to fine-tune their skills. Fast forward to the pros, and voila, they've got a built-in advantage. But do they thank their luck? Not likely. And we're all like that. Many of us have lucked out simply by being born in a prosperous country. Sure, it's a touchy subject for some, because if we're just a product of our circumstances, then where does hard work fit in? Take this experiment, for instance. Participants were grouped in three to discuss a moral dilemma. One person in each group was randomly designated the team leader. Later, the experimenter swung by with a plate of cookies, four per team. So who snagged the extra cookie? You guessed it, the team leader. Even though they had no special skill, no extra responsibilities, and they'd gotten their position through sheer chance. Funny how once you've achieved a certain status, you start to feel entitled to it, and all the other good things that come along with it. Ignoring your lucky breaks makes it convenient to justify your place in society, and turn a blind eye to inequality. But here's the kicker. Downplaying the importance of luck in your life might just give you a leg up on the success ladder. Why? Because when you're not fixated on luck, you're more inclined to roll up your sleeves and put in the elbow grease necessary for success. So let's say it's a useful delusion. If you're aiming at that elusive combo of luck and success, here's the deal. Hit that subscribe button on my channel, adopt the mindset that you're the captain of your destiny, and keep in mind that luck plays a bigger role than we care to admit.